Perfect. Perfect. How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, the show where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Today, we are back with our week three postgame show. The Bears got it done at Soldier Field. Most definitely an ugly win, but there is a lot to talk about. 23-20 to at the buzzer over the Houston Texans. Chicago moves to 2-1. and one. It's a hard league to get wins in. The Bears were able to accomplish that, and they will go to the ne- the Meadowlands next week. Before we start our Bears Giants coverage, we are going to be talking about this twenty three to twenty win. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Wherever you may be listening, do us a favor: drop a like, subscribe, follow, share the podcast, leave us a five star rating. Uh, didn't have much coverage going on in terms of the podcasting side over the weekend, however. We were pretty busy on social media. Sometimes it's just going to be like that if we get too busy. However, we're trying to bring you guys the most comprehensive Bears coverage on the web throughout the entirety of the season. Trying to put out a couple videos a week. Our goal is five. So uh, Giants coverage will start tomorrow, but we thought it was important that we talked about this one, especially after a big win. So thank you guys for joining us once again. I am your host, Chris Malpe. Today, to break this one down, I am joined by my co-host on my right, Parth Shaw Parth. A tough one yesterday. Uh, if you listen to the radio today in Chicago, uh, a lot of people are acting like the Bears lost by 40. However, uh, wins are tough to secure, as I said, in the NFL, and they got it done nonetheless. How are you feeling? Feeling good. I mean, at the end of the day, can't complain. The Bears won. They're 2-1 and one, and winning the games that they should be winning. Um, and I think that's what's the best thing about this whole situation. Yeah, they don't look pretty. But as long as they keep winning games, keep figuring things out, and hopefully pretty soon the offense can also get going. But until then, it's always good to just keep stacking on wins and keep yourself in contention. I mean, at the end of the day, the Bears weren't aren't supposed to be in contention at the end of the year, but if they can keep sneaking out wins when the offense is barely doing anything, I mean, it makes me feel a little bit better about our team. It makes me feel like that when they when they actually can play at a full high level, it can be a different story. Absolutely. I completely agree with you, obviously, yesterday, and we'll get into stats in a second. The name of the game was was running the ball, but you talk about winning games that you have to win. Yesterday was definitely one. Mm-hmm. They're going to have another opportunity against the Giants this week. A uh, tough one in Minnesota in two weeks. They come home against a commander's team. That looks terrible. They go on the road to face the Patriots. Depending on Mac Jones's injury, they could yep. be facing Brian Hoyer. Uh, feels like they're going to be go, going into Dallas playing Cooper Rush. So the Bears have a lot of winnable games early on in the schedule, and they also have an easy stretch of three or four games on the back half. So stacking these wins, I completely agree, Parth, uh, is of the utmost importance. Before we get into talking about the game, let's go through a couple of stats. Yesterday, Justin Fields, we will most definitely be talking about him. It was absolutely abysmal. I did not think I'd be coming on here today and saying that. However, I'm just going to be a straight shooter. Eight for 17, 106 passing yards for him. He was sacked five times for loss of 24 yards, posted his lowest career passer rating at 27.7, and threw two interceptions. Yesterday, the Bears had their best rushing game since 1984. What did they do in 1985? They went and ran and won the Super Bowl. I don't swear on here much. However, I always see the people wearing the hats run the damn ball. David Montgomery went down early in this one. Khalil Herbert played an incredible game. 20 carries for him, 157 yards, 7.9 yards per carry, and two touchdowns with a long (laughs) rush of 52 yards. Fields added 5.9 yards per carry on eight rushes for 47 yards. The Bears overall, 281 rushing yards yesterday. That was incredible to see. Cole Komet did get involved yesterday, two catches for 40 yards. Darnell Mooney, two catches for 23 yards. Equinemius St. Brown had one for 20 early on. However, the receiving was practically non-existent in this one. Uh, Justin Fields fumbled twice in this one, was able to recover one of his own fumbles. Treston Ebner also fumbled once, but Chicago didn't lose any fumbles in this one. The defensive storyline, a big one in this one. They were only able to get to Davis Mills once. However, they did look better against the run. Damian Pierce did have a solid day, uh, 80 rush or 80 rushing yards, uh, four yards per carry and a touchdown, but a lot better in terms of how it compares to week two. Roquan Smith, 
by far, I mean, best player on the field on both sides. 16 tackles for him, two tackles for a loss. A pass defended as well as an interception. Eddie Jackson added another pass defended. Jaquan Brisker totaled up seven tackles, two passes defended for Kindleville Door. All over, the defense was able to give the Texans issues, uh, ended up holding them in check in the second half uh, to, I believe, only a total of six points in the Bears' offense, and specifically that run game was able to get them back into this one. So, Parth, there's obviously a slew of things to talk to when it comes to this game. Uh, the secondary didn't look great out the gate, ended up turning it around. Roquan Smith came out the gate slow as well, ended up having one of the best games we've ever seen him have in his career. Uh, obviously, what's going to grab the headline is Justin Fields uh, playing, uh, I think, the worst game of his career. Uh, and then obviously the Bears being so dominant on the ground. But talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on this week three win. Um, yeah, like you said, um, Justin Fields did not look great. Um, it was not pretty for him. And, you know, despite that, the Bears were still able to pick up the W. Um, the defense, they did start off slow. Davis Mills was able to get down the field early on in the game. Damian Pierce was also able to get some yards early on in the game, but they made some great adjustments. And that's the number one thing that, you know, com look, comes out to you as a fan um, is that they were able to make some good adjustments on defense and make sure that they didn't allow points, um, were able to get to the ball as soon as possible. I mean, Roquan Smith had an amazing game with an interception and 16 tackles. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, the defense came through. Um, and Matt, Eber Matt Eberflus, um, you know, he did a great job at making sure that he switched up whatever it took to get get the Bears in the position to win. Um, at the end of the day, a win's a win, and I'm going to keep keep saying that. Um, and, yeah, Cleo Herbert, he definitely stood out to me. Um, you know, after David Montgomery went down, you know, all Bears fans were not – we're a little bit scared and not happy about that. I mean, at the end of the day, you don't want to see any of your best players get hurt, especially David Montgomery, who works mm -hmm. very hard, has a high motor, and does everything possible to win. I mean, we saw that against Green Bay when he was breaking tackles left and right, just put his head down and just – ran through that Packers defense and he was starting to do that against his Texans defense. And then he ended up getting hurt and then clear Herbert. Um, I mean, I got nothing but great things to say about this guy. Whenever he's on the field, he's always making a play. I feel like, um, and um, he did that yesterday, 30 times. I mean, he was able to get over 150 rushing yards if I'm not wrong. And uh, that's what I'd like to see out of Herbert more. I think he's, he's a really good running back. I know like two weeks ago, I said that he should be our lead back and it's going to be looking like it for at least a week or so from, going forward. So I'm excited to see the opportunity Clear Herbert has. I think he's going to make the most of it and i um, excited to see what happens in week four against the Giants for sure. Yeah, another winnable game upcoming for Chicago. If you want to know my thoughts on this game, you can simply take a look at me if you're watching on YouTube right now. Uh, I'm wearing my Indianapolis Colts shirt. I have adopted them uh, as a resident of Indiana year round now as my AFC team, uh, in a sense. Uh, but yeah, uh, an ugly <coughs> win there, there are goods, there are good things and bad things that you yeah. can take from it. I'm going to start with Khalil Herbert where you left off, uh, absolutely incredible game from him. And he has been quite a beast this season. I mean, 240 rushing yards, six in the league, three rushing touchdowns tied for second, 7.3 yards per carry third in the league, 6.7 yards before wow. contact per rush second in the league up until yesterday in about the second quarter, uh, he's practically been a backup the entire season. Uh, I'm sure we'll make an uncut about it uh, probably in the coming days, honestly, but uh, obviously we've, we've emphasized the entire season. It's going to be a huge one for David Montgomery as he's entering his contract year. Is there a situation where he doesn't return next year? I'm not sure, but with the way Khalil Herbert is playing it is most definitely putting some pressure on this bears front office to consider moving on from montgomery and we both love montgomery i'm sure if he stayed in the game yesterday he would have put up these sort of numbers look man with justin fields i'll stay on the offensive side of the ball uh it, it was tough to watch watching back some of the all 22 film this morning uh it, it, it was tough and it was confusing he was incredibly giddy in the pockets uh sacked five times not the greatest numbers whatsoever, especially with what Houston brings to the table defensively. Uh, missed a ton of players on on countless different reads. Uh, and also, just in general, I don't think he used his legs enough. I think there were a lot of times where he had a clean pocket and had the ability to step up and didn't <laughs> yeah. do that, bailing out too early. Uh, overall, his awareness was not great. However, on the more positive side, as we said in our uncut that we did just a couple of days ago, it's his second year. 
He's only played 13 games now. We know that there are going to be some rough patches. We also know that he has it in him to play well. Uh, it's his second year in the league with a brand new offense. His rookie year really wasn't indicative of what he was able to do, in my opinion, considering he played a handful of games with some injured ribs. So it was tough to watch Fields yesterday. However, I guess the only piece of advice I have this morning is I quite literally think it don't it, it won't get worse than that. In part, I'm pretty sure that's something we said last week. Uh, but looking at the Bears yesterday, I think 66 yards net passing. Uh, when you take into consideration the sacks, something like that. I don't think it can get much worse than that. So Justin Fields with a rough outing, and that was tough to see. Defensively, uh, I think it was a pretty great game. I think the Bears were able to hold guys like Brandon Cooks in check. Jalen Johnson right before the game was declared inactive with a thigh injury, I believe. Uh, and guys like Kendallville Door, who started rough out of the gates, actually stepped up and were able to play well. So Kyler Gordon, uh, it was up and down, but not close to as bad as week two. Uh, I think the secondary was able to step up. Eddie Jackson currently tied for second in the league in interceptions. Roquan Smith with a monster day. He moves into first in the league in overall tackles. Uh, and that's the way he has to play pretty consistently if he really does want to get that top linebacker contract. So it was great to see that out of Roquan yesterday. And then one final thought, uh, it's not being talked about enough. I am so grateful that Cairo Santos is on the Bears. Obviously, we saw years and years of kicking woes in Chicago, dating back to Jay Cutler and Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, however, Cairo may not have that incredibly big leg, but he is consistent. He came through at the end on the 30-yard field goal to win the game, so that was awesome to see. I knew right when the Bears got the ball back on that Roquan interception yeah. that they were going to win the game. So, Parth, let's move into our offensive player of the game. I'm pretty confident you and I are going to have the same picks for offensive and defensive player of the game. Uh, and there really isn't any debating here. So anyone that thinks we should pick different people can go debate a wall. Uh, but I'll start with you. Give us your offensive player of the game in this one. Yeah, no, it's obviously got to be Khalil Herbert, just going back to him. Like I said, I mean, just to come back in the game from an in, like to come back and replace a guy like David Montgomery due to injury and then put up 157 yards and 20 carries, 7.9 yards per carry, and then two touchdowns. That was huge. We, if without him, the Bears would have been nowhere in this game. I think he was most of the offense, if not all of the offense. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, ex I expected this out of Herbert. I thought he was going to be the lead back halfway through the year just because of how talented he is. And um, I'm excited to see what the future holds for him for sure. Yeah, Herbert far and beyond, uh, I would say, carried the Bears offense on his shoulders yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, was able to rack up. Uh, more than half of the entire team's rushing yards. I believe the most rushing yards any Bear has had in a game since I think Jordan Howard I read online on Twitter this morning with 157 on the ground, 169 all-purpose for Herbert. So he by far is also my offensive player of the game. I'm going to say it once, and I will say this again, and I will defend this. I think the Bears have a top three rushing game. Uh, rushing attack in the entirety of football. Not only can they switch it up with David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert, but this offensive line is looking way, way better, in my opinion, than it looked in years past. So Khalil Herbert came out yesterday, did his thing. The Bears were able to pull a bunch of time off the clock uh, by running the ball consistently. I know it can get frustrating at some points how reliant they are on it, and everyone wants Justin Fields to get more reps. But I think one thing that we can most definitely say after this week that me and Parth were kind of emulating last week. Uh, this team is a rush first team. Uh, I always used to make fun of the Tennessee Titans and Derrick Henry for, for deploying that strategy. However, uh, I think it makes sense for the Bears now, and it's keeping them in games, and it's arguably the reason why they are 2-1 and one at this point. So Khalil Herbert far and beyond the offensive player of the game. And this going one, back to that, I was going to say, like, I mean, the Bears are still able to put up 300-plus yards of offense. I mean, last week we had – Against Texas, we had 363 yards of offense, and only 100, or like 80 yards came from passing the ball. So, I mean, just thinking about that, the Bears are still, you know, numbers wise, doing well, yards, and uh, at the end of the day, they're still running more plays than the other team and holding the ball onto for a little bit longer, too. I think that's helping out this defense also. I mean, just by running the ball, the time of possession, and uh, that also leads to a lot of wins. So, the Bears are playing a little bit. You know, like the olden style football, you know, it's and it's might not be pretty to watch, but at the end of the day, the, the, 
statistically they they do mi- w- would win most games by having the ball longer, ha- getting 300 plus 350 plus yards. So uh, at the end of the day, whatever it takes to win. People that are complaining just have to take a look at the box score at the end of the game and yeah. see the the ticker towards the Chicago Bears. But Parth, I completely agree with you. They controlled time of possession yesterday, almost 32 minutes in comparison to the Texans, who were just over 28 minutes. Uh, 12 of their first downs came uh, when the Bears were running the ball. Uh, they were also 6 for 14 on third down, 363 yards of total offense, and that's when obviously the net applies and you take out the sacks that Justin Fields had. Uh, but they were absolutely dominant running the ball. Before I move on, I do want to quickly give a shout-out to Kari Blazing game once again. Uh, I have loved how effective the run game is when he is playing. He played in 15 snaps yesterday, all rushes, 23.8% of Chicago's offensive plays. Uh, and he really is someone who's able to make a difference. Uh, I guess I'll continue to highlight fullbacks throughout the entirety of the year. Uh, however, uh, he is someone who's making a big difference, and the Bears have continued to give him an increased amount of reps since week one. I believe he played in just about 27% of the offensive snaps last week, 24% practically this week, uh, after I believe it was only about 11 or 13% in week one. So, Love to see Blazing game in, uh, and he's able to make an impact for sure. Parth, you have anything else to say before we move on? Yeah, I was just going to say, you did say that he's only been playing on run snaps. That's a little concerning to me because that does, you know, tip up the cap to the other side of the team. You know, that they're, they're going to know what's coming. So I'd like to see the Bears get him involved. Even if it's not about throwing him the ball, just get him in there in passing place because that will at least, you know, not give up what we're – playing basically i mean it's like basically tipping your pitch in baseball that's basically what's going let's on hand here. over the offensive playbook man <laughs> no, no, you know i'm not, not i'm not trying to act like you know that i know what luke like that i'm better than luke Getzi, but i feel like if you throw in a couple <laughs> differentian differentians i don't know it would help out the team help out justin field yes different yeah that, i get what you're saying yeah differentiate the play call when exactly. the play call when he's in or at least keep the defense guessing and maybe that's a good way to get fields going with the play action pass exactly. Also provides him some more blocking. We know he's been uh, a little bit right off untrustworthy uh, of the offensive line, especially in pass protection, even though I think they've looked better. But uh, I completely agree. Nothing better than this show when we just go off on complete, utter, uh, and wild tangents. So uh, definitely love that for us. Uh, however, we are going to come back, talk about the defensive player of the game in this one. But before we do so, we are going to get today to today's sponsored message once again from our friends over at Manscaped. Support for Bear Down is brought by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Their performance package 4.0 that just dropped is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, and you can join over 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer that we have for you. 20% off on your order and free worldwide shipping with the code bear down. Once again, you can see it on your screen now with the code bear down. Let's talk a little bit about more about Manscaped though. Parth, I know you used your set of tools last week. Have you been enjoying them thus far? Yeah, they're great. I mean, I would recommend it to anyone. Uh, I think they do the best at you know, men's grooming and um, there's nothing better out there. Absolutely. And outside of the stuff that I'm going to talk about in a second, I mean, they also have shampoo, deodorant, body wash, absolutely anything you'd need. Boxer uh, briefs, anything. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, But let's talk about the performance package 4.0 that has arrived. And oh my goodness, it's a game changer. They sent some to us. And inside this package, you will find the lawnmower 4.0. That is a trimmer. The weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer. That is awesome as well. You will also find their crop preserver here as well as their crop reviver toner. You will also get some other gifts, uh, including a performance box, pair of performance boxer briefs, as well as a travel bag to hold all of your goodies. We've talked about this lawnmower for quite some time here on the podcast. We did a sponsorship with Manscaped last year as well. This lawnmower 4.0 is the future of grooming and dare I say the greatest ball trimmer ever. They have a 4,000K LED spotlight if you need a more precise shave, and it is also waterproof. The weed whacker is great as well, especially for individuals uh, who have long nose hair or ear growing out, or hair growing out of their ears. Believe me, there are more people than you'd think. But it also is waterproof and provides proprietary skin-safe technology, which can help reduce nicks 
as well as snags and tugs in those delicate, delicate nose and ear holes. Uh, finally, their crop preserver ball deodorant, as well as the crop reviver ball toner, toner excuse me, will change the way that you approach your hygiene routine. We spoke about it all day, uh, and we'll continue to say it until the day we die. Manscaped really is changing the game in terms of men's hygiene, so we really think you should go check them out. It's time to take care of yourself. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with code bear down. Once again, 20% off and free shipping with the promo code bear down at manscaped.com. So once again, thank you to our friends at manscaped for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back into the post game show. All right, Parth, we just went on quite the tangent about the Bears offense. However, it's time to switch gears. Talk a little bit about the defense. We had the same offensive player of the game. Would not shock me if we had the same defensive player of the game as well. I'm just going to throw it out there. Talk to me a little bit about Roquan Smith and what you liked from him yesterday. Yeah, no, what I saw to Roquan Smith was, uh, you know, like the, like the Roquan Smith we're used to seeing. You know, someone who's not scared to get to the ball, is able to get to the ball and finish the tackle. And the interception at the end was – just a great play by him. I mean, he read the quarterback's eyes, saw it was coming to him, and, uh, you know, he just jumped the play. And uh, that's exactly what you want to see out of your linebackers, especially when we're moving into this 4-3 defense. You know, I mean, it's not easy for Roquan to go from a 3-4 to 4-3 after being in a 3-4 for all, almost for four years, basically. So, you know, that switch is never easy. It takes some time for these guys to get used to it. And I think yesterday we saw some flashes of how, how you can play for the rest of the year. Um, I think – um, with about Roquan Smith, he's a great tackler, he's a great finisher, and he has all the tools to be a really good linebacker in this league, and he has been, and he's been underrated for a while. Obviously, this Bears organization's underrated him and hasn't paid him his bag, and he's playing for that big contract that he wants. So I'm excited to see what Roquan Smith can do for the rest of the year. You know, the first two games were a little bit iffy by him, but, you know, this this was a sigh of relief, uh, especially at the end of the day. If the Bears defense wants to be good, you need to have Roquan Smith out there and performing at a high level and that's exactly what we saw yet last this Sunday, and um, definitely gives me some hope for the rest of the way. For the sake of changing things up, I'm going to pick someone different uh, just because I think it's important to highlight how this player played. Uh, incredibly proud of Roquan, and I do think that's something he can do consistently, and yeah. I also do think he deserves to get paid. So uh, obviously the bias is going to be on him. However, <laughs> if he can keep playing like that, he is going to get that $20-plus million a year contract that he wants. Uh, apparently with no strings attached because uh, I don't know what was happening in his contract negotiations this offseason. However, he was not too happy. So if he keeps playing like that, uh, I think even Ryan Poles, who likes to be a little more conservative with money, will definitely pay Roquan. I'm going to highlight Eddie Jackson, uh, and I'm going to be the first to say this. I think Eddie Jackson is so back. I was saying it yesterday on Twitter. I'm going to say it again now. I think Eddie Jackson is back. He recorded his second interception on the season through only a brief three weeks yesterday at a very big point in the game as well. The Texans were driving inside the Bears red zone. A great tip by Kendall Vildor, who I'll give an honorable mention to, uh, who also stepped up yesterday. But Jackson, in my opinion, is back. I think Jaquan Brisker playing at a high level at the strong safety position allows Eddie to really do his thing. Uh, we saw the last two years the Bears had HaHa Clinton Dixon as well as Deshaun Gibson. <laughs> But I think Jackson plays better against, uh, alongside excuse me, this young Brisker who isn't afraid to go up in the box, make big hits, play all over the field. Uh, I think it takes a lot of responsibility off of Eddie's plate. I think Matt Eberflus also coming to Chicago. Uh, shout out the Colts once again. Uh, <laughs> it's something that has helped out Jackson. Uh, I think he's finishing his tackles a lot better. We see him making plays all over the field. His awareness level seems to be better after a couple of years where we really thought he was regressing. So Eddie Jackson played a great game yesterday, uh, all things considered. Eight total tackles for him, a pass, de a pass defended alongside an interception. Really proud of the way he played. And I think when Jalen Johnson is healthy, the Bears have one of the most underrated secondaries in the league that can only continue to get better if Kyler Gordon can work out some of his issues uh, in the slot as well as on the outside. Obviously, it's tough for him as a rookie, but this Bears secondary <laughs> definitely has some very, very good pieces. So excited to see Jackson playing at this high level. I don't think any of us expected it, uh, and we're all surprised by it. However, it is a good thing nonetheless. 
Before we wrap this up, let's talk a little bit about what the Bears need to improve on next week before they head to the Meadowlands. Objectively speaking, it is going to be a huge matchup next week against the New York Giants. They play later tonight, Parse, so rolling in to meet the opponents tomorrow will be perfect considering we'll get to watch 60 minutes of them playing tonight. However, you think about it, and it's going to be a huge game. We're either going to have two teams in the NFC at 2-1 and one, uh, that are looking to maybe somehow sneak into the playoffs uh, needing wins against teams like themselves. Uh, or the Giants could be 3-0, and starting off great uh, this season, but with Saquon Barkley, who has been playing some incredible football. Their defense has stepped up as well. Uh, the Giants could be one of the only undefeated teams in the league next week with the Bears looking to knock them off. It's going to be a huge game nonetheless because I think when you take a look at it on both sides, uh, it's definitely a winnable game for either the Giants or the Bears. Uh, obviously, we will get into our coverage starting tomorrow. But, Parth, I think there's a lot you can take from this game, especially, obviously, once again, I think we're going to be talking about it all season, the Bears' passing attack. But what do you think needs to improve before the Bears head to face the Giants in a game that is a lot bigger than I think a lot of people are giving it credit for early in the week? Yeah, no, it's definitely going to be a big game for the Bears as they move on, try to move on to 3-1 and one in the Giants. If they're 3-0, and oh, I mean, they can be scary. I mean, if they start off the season 4-0, oh, I mean, what can happen in that division? Who knows? So it'll be definitely interesting to see what happens to these two teams. Um, you know, the Giants play tonight, like you mentioned, so we'll see how they play and how the Bears can match up well against them. But definitely um, we're going to need to see a lot more Roquan Smith next week. Um, I think, you know, a guy like Saquon Barkley will definitely run over this Bears defense if they can't tackle him. So we're going to have to see Roquan be just as effective, if not more. And um, need to see more out of Justin Fields. I feel like I'll be saying this for a long time. But, you know, at the end of the day, whatever he did this week was unacceptable. Um, you know, I think this was one of the worst starts I've seen a Bears QB make in a really long time. Um, and especially against this weaker Texans defense, you know, I mean, I, I'll give credit to Lobby Smith and his defense. I think the Texans have played really good football this year. Every single game they played has been very tight. Um, but, you know, as, as a Bears fan, as a Justin Fields, you know, as, as a Justin Fields fan, you want to see him improve. And we didn't get to see that. Haven't been seeing much of that this year. Um, and, you know, he definitely needs to get it going, especially passing wise. I think that's the number one thing. And whether that falls on him, Luke Getze, whatever it is, they need to fix that out. Um, I know he's someone who loves to grind, you know, I mean, saw, so I don't know who it was, but I think it might've been his roommate or something that posted pictures of him working out at 8 30 yesterday. Night. Yeah, exactly. The like, like that, that, like that's dedication. I mean, yeah, we know, I mean, I'd, oh, I'd rather see him, you know, studying film or something like that, but you know, Oh, please don't complain. You wouldn't be working out at 8 30 if you're an IU football player after the game. Uh, oh yeah. No, I, I don't think I would ever, but uh, you know, that, that, that's the thing. Justin Fields is a lot. He's a lot dedicated, more, man. He's a lot more dedicated to the craft than a lot of other guys are. So at the end of the day, you wish for a guy like him to succeed. And um, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, and uh, I really want to see him break out, you know, be able to talk, talk, the Bears fans are waiting to talk about Justin Fields. Let's be honest. We're waiting for that blow-up game and uh, that consistent performances out of him. And I think if that starts to click, this Bears team can be very dangerous moving forward. Parse waiting to post on Twitter the x-ray with the dog inside the human lungs and kidneys. Lungs, yeah. when Justin Fields has a good game and tweet out he is him and do his whole overreaction thing that he always does. <laughs> However, um, talking about the next week against the Giants, uh, Parth, you mentioned it. I think shutting down Saquon Barkley is going to be huge. I'm sure it's something I'm going to discuss during our episode of three key matchups yeah. this week. Look, the Bears are going up against a defense that I think is extremely underrated next week with the New York Giants. Guys like Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, Kayvon Thibodeau, who has looked great, uh, and then a secondary that has some solid pieces as well with Adoree Jackson, Julian Love, Xavier McKinney. Uh, this Giants team, I think, is very underrated and very comparable to the Bears. Their defensive coordinator, Wink Martindale, is not going to make it as easy as Lovey Smith did to run the ball all over. He is going to put the onus on Justin Fields to beat the New York Giants in this game. And I think the Bears need to try and do the exact same thing defensively in this one. Uh, I think it might turn into a little bit of a turnover fest. Uh, I, I really don't want that to happen. But if the Bears can shut down Saquon Barkley, someone who is rushed for, and this is before uh, tonight's game, he's rushed for 236 yards, also had a touchdown on the ground. If you can bottle up Saquon, who's looking like he's playing back in his old form as well, alongside Eddie Jackson, uh, it's going to be tough 
for Daniel Jones to beat you. The Giants wide receiver room is banged up. I think this is one of the Bears' best matchups so far in terms of how their secondary compares to the wide receivers they're going up against. Uh, so defensively, if the Bears can shut down the run in this one, uh, obviously in this next game, uh, and make Daniel Jones beat them, I think they could be in for a very competitive game on Sunday and have a real opportunity to move to 3-1. and one. Offensively, I think you have to, have to, have to, have to get Justin Fields into a groove early, even if it's throwing short five-yard passes to get him some confidence. Luke Getze, you have to get him outside of the pocket. You have to get him used to extending plays with his feet. You have to incorporate the run because it works. But you have to get Justin Fields into a, a groove early. I think you could see him struggle a little bit uh, against the Texans, and it really got to his head. So if the Bears can go down the field, get some confidence early, get field some rushing yards, get field some passing yards, get the run game implemented nicely. Uh, I believe the Bears will be able to hopefully come out on top in this one and play a better game offensively. We're waiting for the game, as you mentioned, Parth, where Justin Fields really goes off. I don't think it's going to happen against the New York Giants. However, I'm looking for more pass attempts, more passing yards. I think it's important that the Bears win these games. However, I, I want to be able to evaluate Justin Fields and I believe his 23 completions that he's had through three weeks of the season are the least that any NFL quarterback that has started on his team has seen since the year 2000. So I would love to see the Bears get Fields into a groove early. It was nice to see Cole Komet make a couple of grabs last week. Darnell Mooney is still invisible. Equinemia St. Brown is the Bears' leading wide receiver. And I was talking about ESB all offseason. However, I didn't expect this. So getting Fields into a groove early, let's get some short throws in there. Let him use his legs. Let him extend plays. Uh, and then the onus, once again, is going to be on fields, I think, to go out and win this game against a defense that is extremely <clears throat> underrated. So uh, getting him into a groove early and getting some confidence for the young quarterback is going to be a big one for sure. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our week three pregame show. I believe our longest on the season. Uh, a lot of jam-packed action in this one. So thank you guys if you have listened uh, in, to it in, 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 in its entirety uh, all the way through. We're trying to bring you guys the most comprehensive Bears coverage on the web throughout the entirety of the 2022 regular season. If you haven't done so already, drop a like, subscribe, follow, share the podcast, leave it a five-star rating. We are getting our Bears-Giants coverage underway tomorrow. If you would like to find more content from us, you can head to our website, beardown.com. The link to that is down in the description. If you would like to find the podcast on social media, see some content that isn't essentially posted or talked about here on the podcast, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Bear Down. And finally, you can find the links to all of our personal social media pages down in the description. Myself, as well as Parth and the entirety of our team. It's just another great way to interact with us. And you can see our thoughts on all things Bears, the entirety of the National Football League, and all of Chicago sports year-round. Parshaw was not a good win yesterday, uh, as we've mentioned throughout this podcast. However, the Bears got it done. Getting wins in this league are of the utmost importance, and I'm happy on a victory Monday for that reason. Uh, regardless, I think the offense has to be better. I think Justin Fields must be better. However, the Bears are in a spot that we predicted them to be in uh, before the season started, but I think a lot of people didn't think that they would be two and one heading into week four. No. Any last words before we sign off here? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, wins a win uh, with the bears are two and one and uh, are tied for first in the division with the Packers and the Vikings. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens next week against the giants. Um, you know, they play tonight, uh, giant giants, Cowboys can't, can't up. Those games are always fun to watch. Um, hopefully Tony Pollard breaks off for 20 points for my fantasy. But you know, other than that, Bears. I need a lot out of Saquon too. I think I need like 25. Yeah, so let's just let's just hope they just run the ball. Both teams. No Zeke though. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I think my final my final touches on this on this post game show would say uh, be patient. I think the Bears defense is playing at a pretty high level. I think the Bears running game, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, is a top five uh, unit in the league. They are putting up yards like they haven't in 20, 30 years. Uh, and they have a great tandem at running back. If Justin Fields can figure this out, and if Luke Getze can figure this out offensively, I think the Bears could be in a really good spot in a couple of weeks with a lot of winnable games on the table. So we will go into the Meadowlands this week. I think the Bears are going to give the Giants a very tough test, and maybe, just maybe, 
we could come out on top and move to three and one, which would be an ideal start. So glad the Bears got the win. That'll conclude it for our week three post game show. Guys, it's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Maltby. I am excited for this upcoming week. Another great opportunity on the schedule early on in this season against the New York Giants. Our coverage for that will kick off tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. And Bears fans, as always, do us a favor and stay safe and bear down. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.